So now that you have some of the controls and menus down, let's get you started. You're going to be wandering around, discovering everything you can. Every discovery you make will allow you to use that item in crafting and award you a small amount of LP. The more you discover, the more crafting recipes and buildings you will unlock once you have the necessary skills. If you ever run into any danger in your journey, you can return to your hearth fire. I recommend you put this action onto your hotbar along with other common actions like lift, dig, and destroy. The first ability you'll want to raise is exploration to 5. This will allow your character to see more forageables like stinging nettles. We'll want to increase the quality of the things we pick up, so for that we'll need to raise our survival to 5 next. Now we'll be able to find and craft better items. To finish, you'll want to raise your exploration to 10, and then your survival to 10. Early on, these are your most important abilities, and the rest can be improved later. Along your trek, keep an eye out for a few things. Birch trees, you'll need to grab two pieces of bark for your quest to craft a kooksa. This will allow you to carry water. You'll also want to grab six more pieces of bark to craft yourself a backpack. Stinging nettles start appearing in forests at 25 exploration times perception. You'll use these to craft yourself some clothes. Your character can wear two pairs of shirts and pants, and for that we'll need about 20 nettles. If you see a spruce tree, from these you can grab two spruce bow to craft yourself a spruce cap with. Craft an axe, chop a tree, or find a fallen log, and chop two blocks from it and craft yourself some clogs for shoes. Keep an eye out for small animals like squirrels, rabbits, chickens, or others. Catching one will give you the bone discovery, allowing you to craft a bone saw. And if you see any reeds, grab three of them so you can make yourself a belt. In your time wandering, you'll encounter a few anthills. In order to safely raid these, you'll want to walk up next to it. Make sure you don't see any ants moving faster than the others. These would be super ants and should be avoided. Then, when all the ants are far from you, far as possible, begin raiding the ant hill. As soon as your character interacts with the hill, the ants will aggro to you. At this point, you should run away. Um, you're going to need to lead these ants a fair distance away. Next, you'll run past the ants and raid the hill while the ants are still walking back. Raiding ant hills can be a great source of LP, curiosities, and food. To save time, you may want to traverse the world using a boat. Once you have the skill for boat making, unlock through swimming, you can carve a dugout from a fresh tree log. Once carved, you will need to burn the interior for 20 real life minutes for it to be usable. If you want to protect your items from other players, you can build yourself a lean-to. A lean-to is a structure that allows you to store two liftable objects. Once you deposit a liftable object into one, a little piece of paper will show up on it and it will become claimed. If using crates, this will give you 30 slots of inventory to work with while you work towards getting yourself a proper claim. Once you have built a lean-to, you may want to move your hearth fire to it. Build yourself a dream catcher. After some time, you can harvest a beautiful dream, construct a new hearth fire at your temporary shelter. Our goal is to ultimately find a place to call home. For this, we're going to need to work towards the skill Yamanri, which costs 4000 LP and gather us one beautiful dream, four bones, four stones, and five wood blocks. But more on that in another video.